Hello everyone and welcome to Procurement in the Park. I'm Christian Shu, and today we are going to explore a fundamental business philosophy that has transformed the tech giant and holds crucial lessons for today's automotive industry. This philosophy is known as the Cook Doctrine, named after Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. Good evening. The Cook Doctrine is a set of principles that guide Apple's approach to innovation and to business strategy. It emphasizes the importance of making great products, focusing on innovation and the belief in simplicity over complexity. A key aspect of this doctrine is the conviction that a company should own and control the primary technologies behind its products. This approach ensures not only quality, but also uniqueness in the marketplace. Now let's see how this philosophy, particularly the emphasis on controlling primary technologies, is not just transformative for Apple, but also serves as a strategic lesson for car makers, especially in the era of electric vehicles and autonomous driving technology. Let's begin with Apple's strategic shift away from Intel, a move that resonates deeply with the Cook Doctrine's emphasis on control over primary technologies. By developing their own silicon, Apple did more than just change suppliers. They revolutionized their strategic direction. The M-series chips in MacBooks marked a leap in computing, achieving unrivaled performance per watt. These chips enable laptops that are not just powerful, but efficient, cool, and with a battery life that set new industry standards. This kind of innovation exemplifies the Cook Doctrine, a drive towards self-reliance and excellence. The implications of this approach are vast and far-reaching, especially for the automotive industry. In the era of electric vehicles and autonomous driving technology, the industry is at a crossroads and Apple's approach offers valuable lessons. First, there's Tesla. They stand out in the automotive industry, not just for the electric vehicles, but for the unique user interface. The recent launch of the Cybertruck, with its innovative interface, has received a claim from tech influencers yeah, like Marquez Brownlee. But that brings us, of course, to the new software. So I think they've done an actually really, really good job with the software and this all new cyber UI. Tesla's approach to integrating technology seamlessly with user experience is a testament to the value of controlling primary technologies. In contrast, most other car makers are increasingly outsourcing their user interfaces to tech giants like Google and Apple. This strategy while practical in the short term, risks reducing these brands to mere hardware providers. As the electric powertrain becomes more standardized, these car makers face the danger of losing their unique identity. The smartphone industry provides a cautionary tale here, where many manufacturers lost their distinctiveness by relying too heavily on external software providers. Now let's talk about General Motors. In a bold move that mirrors Apple's pivot from Intel, GM recently announced its decision to phase out CarPlay and Android Auto from its vehicles. This decision, while controversial, aligns with the Cook Doctrine's principle of owning and controlling primary technologies. GM aims to create 
a unique infotainment system for its future line of electric vehicles. By doing so, GM is attempting to carve out a unique identity in the increasingly homogeneous automotive landscape. However, GM's strategy is not without challenges. At Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference in 2022, Apple unveiled the next generation of CarPlay, promising deeper integration with vehicle functions like air conditioning, radio, and support across multiple displays. This level of integration, supported by major car makers, sets a high bar for user experience in vehicles. GM's departure from this established platform means they need to match or exceed these expectations to justify their decision. GM's move is aimed at collecting more of its data to understand drivers better and enhance long-term profit margins. This strategy involves leveraging data and software as competitive tools, a direction that is increasingly important in the automotive industry. So what does all this mean for car makers and businesses in general? It's a clear indication that the future belongs to those who can control and innovate their primary technologies. As we've seen with Apple, owning the core aspects of your product can lead to unparalleled success. For the automotive industry, this is a crucial juncture. Will they follow Apple's path and invest in developing their own technologies? Or will they continue relying on external providers and risk losing their unique edge? In conclusion, the Cook Doctrine's emphasis on owning and controlling primary technologies is a powerful lesson for all industries. In my book, Profit from the Source, published by Harvard Business Review Press, there is a particularly relevant recommendation in this context. It is empower your procurement. Currently, innovation in many sectors, including automotive, is an inside-out activity driven predominantly by engineering, with procurement entering the picture too late to significantly impact cost, quality, and sustainability of the product. In contrast, the tech industry, exemplified by Apple, engages procurement in an outside-in manner. Here, innovations from suppliers are aligned with the product roadmap from the beginning. This approach not only enhances innovation, but also ensures efficiency and alignment with market needs. Adopting this strategy can transform how companies approach product development and supplier relationships, offering a roadmap to success in an increasingly competitive and technology-driven world. Thank you for watching. I'm Christian Schuh, and this is Procurement in the Park.